Hey Stargazers, welcome back to another episode of Skywatch Wednesday. My name is Nick, I'm a theaters manager at the Adler Planetarium in Chicago, Illinois. In today's episode, we're going to be talking all about the winter sky. And this year, we've got basically a season of planets, with all five naked eye planets making an appearance at some point. Better still, four of those planets will be visible in the early evening hours for basically the entire season. And to make it even more special, one of those planets will be disappearing for an entire hour in January. Which one? Well, let's find out. Let's head outside and look to the southwest about an hour after sunset in mid-December. You'll have no trouble finding this planet because it's the brightest point of light in the entire sky this season. That's the planet Venus. It's going to be unmistakable and climbing higher in the sky after sunset throughout January and February. Venus is so bright that it's visible in the daytime sky, with no binoculars or telescope needed. The trick is knowing where to find it in that big sea of blue sky. That gets easier when the moon is nearby, so you have a reference point. And that's going to be the case on January 3rd and February 1st. Closer to sunset, though, Venus becomes very apparent, and by the time the sky is dark, it is blazing in the west. The view through a telescope of Venus can definitely be exciting as well. You're not going to see any features in the clouds, but you will see it go through phases. It starts off December quite a bit more than half-lit, a gibbous phase. In the early part of January, it will be exactly half-lit, and by the end of January, it starts to have a distinct crescent appearance. Its phase shrinks to a very thin crescent by the end of February, but it's still very bright because it's so much closer to Earth. And through a telescope, it'll appear about twice as big as it did in December. Right at the beginning of March, Venus will be joined by the planet Mercury in the evening sky. Mercury is very elusive. You don't get to see it very often. And it'll be much dimmer and only visible easily for about that first week of March. So look for it below and to the left of much brighter Venus. Back to the December sky, Saturn begins the winter just about due south after sunset. It is well placed in the early evening for a telescope view, though it is quite a bit smaller than it appeared at its closest in September. The rings of Saturn should still be visible through a small backyard scope, but just barely. They're getting close to being perfectly edge on. Over the next year, the rings will be nearly edge on as seen from Earth, and that's an occurrence that happens only every 15 years or so. Saturn has a very beautiful conjunction with Venus on the nights of January 15th through 19th. Those two planets are going to appear closest in the sky on the 17th and 18th. But the difference between the two couldn't be more stark. You'll be able to fit both of them in the view of a pair of binoculars, but Venus will appear about 200 times brighter than Saturn. The giant planet Jupiter starts the winter very bright in the eastern sky as the sky gets dark. It's at its closest for the year as the season begins, so this is a great time to get out there and look through a small backyard telescope. The globe and cloud bands should be very obvious, and possibly the great red spot if it's facing Earth when you're looking. Jupiter spins once every 10 hours or so, so if the great red spot isn't visible one night, you can try your luck another night. Also look for the four Galilean moons of Jupiter. They're always fairly close to the planet in a telescope view, and can be seen even through binoculars if they're held very steadily. This year, Jupiter is hanging around the true wintertime constellations, and it makes it an easy jumping off point to explore this part of the sky. You'll find Jupiter for this entire season hanging out between the horns of Taurus the bull. So look for the bright star Aldebaran that marks the eye of Taurus, and it's part of the V shape of stars that mark the bull's head. The horns extend out to two stars out there beyond Jupiter. Now you can also see in this part of the sky the beautiful cluster of stars that's known as the Pleiades, or the Seven Sisters. To the left of Taurus and Jupiter, as they're rising in the east, is the bright star Capella. That's part of the constellation of Orijah, the charioteer. I like to imagine the rising winter stars as three layers of constellations. So the first layer is what we just looked at, Taurus and Orijah, and they're joined this year by the brilliant Jupiter. Now below them rising up is the next layer of winter constellations, most notably the well-known constellation of Orion. You've got the bright belt of three stars, as well as the bright stars Rigel and Betelgeuse. They make this an unmistakable pattern, visible even from light-polluted skies. 
Orion rises around sunset in the early part of winter, and for the entire season is easily visible. If you have binoculars or a small telescope, you can begin to show the Great Orion Nebula, which is located in the middle star of Orion's sword. This will look like a fuzzy patch with binoculars or a telescope, and some of the fancy pictures you've seen through astrophotography begin to show the full extent and the complicated structure of this star-forming region. To Orion's left, as it rises, you'll see the twin stars of the Gemini twins, Pollux and Castor. So we've got Orion and Gemini making up the second layer of these winter constellations. So if we go a little bit later on in the night, we'll find that third layer rising up. And this layer is joined this year by a bright planet. Let's start with constellations. You'll see the brightest star in the nighttime sky, Sirius, part of Canis Major, the big dog. Now, if you see points of light in the sky that are brighter than Sirius, you'll know those are planets. Jupiter easily outshines Sirius right now, and Venus will be even brighter. To the left of rising Sirius is Procyon, the bright star in the constellation of Canis Minor, the little dog. And to the left of those two, and just about the same brightness as Sirius right now, is the red planet Mars. Mars will be shining at its brightest for the year right around mid-January and its distinctive reddish-orange color should be pretty obvious to the naked eye. Mars is always fairly small through a telescope, even when it's at its closest. This year, it'll be less than a third of the apparent diameter of Jupiter as seen through a telescope. Details are going to be pretty hard to make out, but you'll see some suggestions of bright and dark areas on the surface, as well as the bright northern polar ice cap. The most intriguing event for Mars this season, and maybe for the entire winter, will be when Mars completely disappears, or more specifically, when the moon covers it up. On the night of January 13th, you'll get to see what's called a lunar occultation of Mars. It's perfectly timed for most of the US, eastern Canada, and Mexico. After sunset that night, the full moon will be in the east. Mars will start to the moon's lower left, though you will need binoculars or a telescope to see the actual occultation where the moon covers up Mars. That evening at 8.07 Central Standard Time, the moon will begin to cover up the red planet, and it's going to take about half a minute for the moon to move completely over it. A little over an hour later, at about 9.16, Mars will re-emerge on the opposite side of the moon as the moon moves out of the way. Lunar occultations aren't all that common, so if the sky is clear, definitely make a point to look up and see this on the evening of January 13th. Well, that's what we've got for you this episode. Thanks, as always, for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to Adler's YouTube channel and also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok. Clear skies. We'll see you next time.